How's it going, everyone? I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back aboard the Nostalgic Train. Alright, so... Another episode without Pink Fox. She is not feeling very well, plus she is at work. And we are doing more side stories, so there's that, too. Today... I think... Yeah, today we'll be working on Self-Love Part 1, the final story, the first part of the final side story. Let's begin. It's only been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Natsuki, with Monica's help. Because Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day. She and Natsuki haven't faced each other since. Although it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself anxiously counting the hours until she will need to face the outcome of her efforts, whether good or bad. And because the passing by of students was making her feel even more anxious, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could to find to spend her lunch. The bathroom? No, <laughs> that's probably good. That's probably a good thing. Because this staircase is under maintenance, no student would have any reason for coming here. Just watch Natsuki be over there already. It's such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the middle of a frantic school day. Yep, yep, call it. Call it. What are you doing here? Um, I, 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 I just... Yuri grips her book with enough force to wrinkle the pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs. Yeah, don't do that, Yuri. Well, what are you doing here? I just came to get a drink from the vending machine. The other one was out of the drink I like. Yuri notices Natsuki fidgeting with a few coins between her fingers. Well, she's telling the truth, at least. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Natsuki, also looking away, shovels over to the vending machine. It's so quiet that every one of her movements seems to reverberate through the entire stairwell. After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which she then fidgets with in place of the coins. It's some kind of iced tea. But instead of leaving right away, Natsuki just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I mean, that's not what I meant, really. I mean, it's totally cool that it's your thing, or whatever. Like, I, 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 I can see how it suits you. So oh, wow. Natsuki's trying, at least. Not because I think you're creepy or something. I didn't mean that either. You know, I, I'm just going to stop talking. That seems like a good idea. It's okay. Everything is okay. Bull, Yuri. Yuri finds herself attempting some words of comfort after hearing Natsuki stammer herself into dejection. Seemingly in response, Natsuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits herself down near Yuri. Well, I, I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Natsuki twists the cap off her drink and takes a sip. Despite receiving Yuri's general permission, Natsuki doesn't say anything more. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. Really? Wait, what? And the two just sit there for a long time. Um. Awkward. The tension seems to fade a little bit as time passes. Even without any words, this seems to mean at least something. Though, it's not clear what that may be. Well, 
launch ends more quickly than expected. Natsuki is the first to stand up with her empty drink bottle. Are you coming, Kay? To the club? Yuri nods. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't for some reason. I don't know why. I do. I get it. But I want to. Eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. Well, they seem to be getting along better than the day before. Or the day before that. I don't know. I'm confused. It's the next day. Natsuki appears from around the corner and steps up to the vending machine, glancing at Yuri as she does so. Today, she seems to be holding some kind of book as well. Oh, you're here again. Well, I just came here to read this. Because there aren't any people around here. Oh? I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. Well, I don't. But there's no people here. <laughs> Bonus for being quiet! I see. Natsuki sits down. The mood feels much different today than it did yesterday. In a good way or a bad way? Mood shifts are very strange. I don't understand them. After yesterday's lunch at the and the club meeting that followed, Natsuki and Yuri are beginning to feel more relaxed around each other again. Although Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Natsuki's mind, she continues to detour around it. But it's okay that I'm here. Yeah, I don't care. I mostly just don't feel like dealing with the crap I get from my friends about it. They're not friends if they treat you that way. You've already seen how they treat her, if you've been following up in the episodes, but... That, those are not friends! Especially since, like... They all, like, just assume I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from them exactly, but I just don't want it to come up again now after I've waited so long for this new volume to come out. Every month at this point. You don't have it. You don't have other friends who are into manga? Not unless online friends count. Did I just say online? I just said online. Ignore that. And Sayori? Well, that's different, because she's not exactly into it. She just likes it. You know what I mean? So she doesn't delve into, like, the lore, stuff like that kind of thing? Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you're lucky that the books you're into at least just look like books. So you don't have to feel like everyone is constantly judging you by what you're reading. Uh-oh. Why do I feel like this is going to go downhill? That would be so awful. Especially since I already hate attention so much. Well, it's a good thing I have thick skin. <laughs> what? What? By the way, I would totally recommend finding some friends online if you haven't already. If you're like me and have no one to share your hobbies with. Oh, I have online friends. Well, there you go. Wow. If you guys didn't miss out last episode, then you already know this, but if you missed out on the hour-long last episode, these two are a lot similar. And this was claimed by literally the other two club members at the time. These two are a lot similar than they let on. And they'd like to believe. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about those days. Sometimes I feel like the, the me from a few years ago would have benefited from a good smack across the face. Oh, whatever. We were all just stupid kids back then anyway. Okay, yeah, sure. Some of the fanfics I wrote, thank God I used the pseudonym. Oh, But I liked it at the time. I got a lot of fulfillment out of it. Plus, I can look back and say with confidence that I've become a better person since then. That's a good way of looking at it, actually. 
So I don't think I would change anything. I wonder if a few years from now, we'll think the same thing about our current selves. <laughs> Probably. That doesn't make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't care what other people think of me, especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Hmm. Alright, here. Natsuki raises her hand to her face and forcefully slaps her own cheek. That's me from the future coming to church. <laughs> okay, you know what? That sounds like something I'd do. That sounds like the kind of crap I'd pull. Also, ow! We need to do it now! <laughs> yep, that's definitely something I'd do. Yuri doesn't seem to react. But then, to Natsuki's surprise, Yuri shyly looks the other way before lifting her arm and doing the same thing to herself. Loudly smacking her cheek. Wow. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I did not see that coming. She turns red and stares into her lap, but is unable to hide a smile as though it was a really funny... Okay, okay. Finally ways of getting along. Oh, that's what I'm talking about! I didn't know you had it in you! I... I, I d don't! I, I don't even know why I did that! Oh, come on, that was funny! That was funny! Maybe I thought it would be funny! It was! You even thought so too, Yuri! You did your... Mingling with her was a good idea whether you think so or not, Yuri! Sorry, I keep distracting you. You said you were looking forward to reading. But I keep going on about all this nonsense. I'll let you get to your reading. Oh, right. She doesn't care. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll do that then. She doesn't want to. I know that kind of conversation. She doesn't care. Phone, shush. I'm getting a message, but it looks like it's from a specific individual that I can hold off for a short time. Uh, hopefully. Maybe? Yeah. It's not important. The conversation ends quickly. And Natsuki opens her book. Well, that's horrible. It's... It's from Discord, and I barely look on Discord. Let's put it that way. The two read silently for the remainder of the lunch hour. So I guess that would have been the better way of phrasing it. Just It's Discord. I can put a hold on it for a little bit. Especially since they're going to be doing this for a bit of time. But the whole time, Yuri feels distracted by a twist of regret over having so abruptly forced the end of their conversation. Then you and her think a lot more alike than you want to believe, Yuri. You're back! Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. I'm starting to deny that. I'm starting to doubt that. Another day has passed. During lunchtime, Natsuki finds herself having wandering to the stairwell once more. Hey, did you buy that? Natsuki quickly notices a bottle of iced tea on the staircase where she normally sits. Yuri nods, avoiding eye contact. They're definitely getting along a lot better. This is officially, I mean, it's already been proven, it's already been claimed and officialized and blah blah blah. This is it's a good thing this is not canon to the main story, otherwise my brain would implode on itself. What, like for me? But you didn't know I was coming here today. What if I didn't show up? She probably would have brought it to you. Well, I just... I mean, I would have drank it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it wasn't. It was very considerate. No, it, it, it wasn't stupid. I just thought... Never mind. What I meant to say is thank you. That is a really nice gesture. It's... it's okay if you don't feel that way. Wow. These two think so much alike that they think they're con- They- they- they both think that the other is thinking the opposite of what they're thinking simultaneously. And somehow they're getting along because of it. I do. It was the other thing 
that I didn't mean. I swear. Please believe me. <sighs> Yuri pauses, then nods. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot, too. So I believe you. Natsuki exhales in relief. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes the drink. Knowing Yuri, she was probably overthinking it so much that Natsuki's tepid response filled her with self-doubt. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please, don't feel obliged. Obligated? I was about to say... Did I just say obligated? David's going loony today. I want to. I want to do nice things too. Okay. Thank you. You can thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. I'll do it then too. Natsuki sighs. Huh? Nothing. It just reminds me how I haven't been getting along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming been coming here? Blah. I really can't speak. Well, no, not exactly. I haven't been avoiding them on purpose or anything. Ball! There are just other things I, I'd rather be doing during lunch lately. Really, like what? Hanging around with and talking to Yuri? Possibly? Okay, you know what? Sure. I'll answer the phone. Ignoring that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this was definitely not important. Oh, well. Might as well have responded to it. That way, I could... Yeah, it was it was a random Discord notification that had nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> I need to turn those off at some point. I like being around them when, they, when we're all just having fun. But they also just can't take anything seriously. So when I'm, I don't know, feeling serious... And their attitudes just really get on my nerves. That one I think Yuri can understand. It's only got worse ever since I joined the literature club. How come? I don't know. I feel like I used to be really good with just putting up with it. Up, uh, up. Uh. Because it would be so stupid to cause drama over a joke I didn't like or something. But I just... I have a hard time doing that lately. But it's my fault for being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not going to demand for everyone around me to change. But... Yeah, I know. Monica and Sayori really don't agree with that kind of thing. But they're not in my position. So it's easy for them to say that you should just communicate your feelings or whatever. It's not like my friend group does that kind of thing. It was just me making an embarrassment of myself. Sorry. None of this has anything to do with you. I, I don't know why I'm talking about it. It's okay. I like listening. What? Listening to other people's problems? Yes. <laughs> That's weird. Oof. Oof. Bad wording. Bad wording. Sorry. I just like learning about people. I can see that. Do you think it's weird? No, that's not weird. I probably just misunderstood. So, I don't know. Does that mean I should keep going? If you'd like. Okay. Well, I don't know what to talk about now. What are some things that you like about your friends? A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang out with. Like after school and on the weekends. And they really like my baking. And it's fun to complain about school together. They make me laugh a lot. And we have a lot of good memories and inside jokes. Oh. I'm bad at a lot of those things. So? Are those all the things that are important to you? Well, kind of. But they're not things I need to get out of everybody. Everyone in the club is really different from that. 
But I'm still friends with them too. Well, Sayori really likes your baking. And she makes you laugh. And she complains a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's actually true. That doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. Well, unlike them, she's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Excuse me? How about you don't talk that way about my friends that you don't know anything about? Natsuki stands up. No, wait! I'm sorry, I, 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 I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. Please don't leave. <sighs> yeah, Natsuki sc- <laughs> I can't speak! Natsuki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. As long as you understand that you can't just judge people like that. My gosh, phone! Ugh, I'm gonna turn that thing off. As long as you- Oh, I already read that. I'm sorry. Natsuki sits back down. Can't just compare friends like that and, like, measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. That is true. I'm sorry. I just... I just... Don't like people who want to hurt you. Wait, what? A moment of silence stretches between them. They don't want to hurt me. They just like to tease each other about stupid things. It's fun. Uh, if I remember the scene where Monica overhears your friends having fun with you, that's bull, Natsuki. I don't like that. Well... That's why I'm friends with them, and, and you're not. You like it? Just don't worry so much about me. It's not worth it. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that's... Everything she's saying right now is bogus. I'm sorry. Wish I knew how to help with social conflicts. Like how Monica can. She's good at these things. Not really. Also... I don't always want help. Sometimes it's just stuff I have to deal with myself. That's what Monica and Sayori never seem to understand. And that's something I know Yuri understands. Sometimes all you do is look at them wrong and they're all like, Ah, oh, what's wrong? Is everyone, everything okay? I just want to mind my own business sometimes. And decide myself if I want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So you really shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You're not as bad as you think. Oh, you don't need to reassure me or anything. I mean that. Plus, it makes sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. So what, you're calling me a bad listener? I talk a lot. Ask Amber or Aaron. I talk a lot. Maybe not the most, but yeah, I definitely talk a lot. But I do listen. Maybe I'm not the best, but I'm sure not a bad one. Thank you. You're also nice. Oh boy. It's really hard for me. It doesn't come naturally at all. It's so weird because I always thought of myself as someone who can just say whatever's on my mind. But I feel like that only works when I'm annoyed or upset. Or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? You don't have to answer that. I'm just talking to myself. Yuri nods and remains silent. Natsuki notices her fidgeting with the pages of her book. How come you like reading so much? Oh, um, well, a lot of reasons. But I just get sucked into it so easily. It's so immersive. Like, I want to part, I want to be part of it. Eh, close enough. I think... There are a lot of things about people in real life that make me feel uncomfortable and frustrated. 
especially when it comes to the following. When it comes to following social conventions and group interactions. I just don't really understand it. And I have no real desire to participate. But it's different with books. It feels like I always want to be around the characters. I feel such a strong emotional connection with them in a ways that I've never felt with real people. So, in that way, it can sometimes feel more real than real life. Okay, that's actually, that's a pretty good analogy. I'll give her that. Really? It's that hard for you to be around people? Like, all the time? Hmm, fairly often. Especially in group settings. When people are making all kinds of conversation and saying jokes and all of that, I don't know what to do. I just disengage. Oh. It doesn't get lonely? I don't think so. I can still enjoy spending time with people one-on-one. -on -one. And I have online friends too, of course. Do you ever... Do you ever wish that you could be friends with the characters in your book? All the time. Sometimes so badly that it makes my heart ache. Yeah. That's something you both have in common. Just based off that question and that response, they have that in common. Me too. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, that was over-exaggerated. Hold on. That's adorable. I gotta get a thumbnail of that in particular. There's the thumbnail. A lot. Um, Natsuki? Like, more than anything. After Natsuki mutters that, silence fills the stairwell once more. But it's a mutual silence, one full of understanding. Dang. Dang, man. Well, that leaves one more side story. After this one's completed, um, we'll be onward to finish the main campaign. Wait. From Ria Vorte, or Re Vorte, one or the other, to Untitled Mail Group, Do Not Use. Oh. Uh, subject, side stories. Thank you to everyone who worked so hard on the control simulation. I can't imagine how tedious it must have been to so delicately hide Monica's elevated permission. Huh? Permissions from her without disrupting our connection to the VM. Virtual main? Is that what that's supposed to be? Anybody who's tech savvy would know this. Aaron probably would know what that means. Just to clarify, all of the recordings labeled side stories are part of the control simulation, right? I'm noticing some details of the characters' lives here and there that differ a little bit from those in VM1, even trivial ones. Is it part of the butterfly effect from some of Monica's more fundamental changes? Or is it a result of her just messing around with the other characters in VM1? as her own experiment, or for fun. So, if I'm keeping track, we have what? Like five different universal universes in total? Wait, what? So, are you telling me each side story is basically its own universe? Or not? This confuses me. With three or four of them created and then destroyed by Monica, of course. Huh? It's funny, because I keep wanting to speculate on which one is the real universe, but in reality, they all are. As real as ours is, anyway. I don't like this. I don't like this. I've already read this email, right? Have I read this one? I think I have. No. Wait. 
I don't think, have I? Oh, this is a different date. This one came after, though, but I got it prior to it. Okay. All right. What pictures did we gurn? Gurn. Yeah, that, that's a word. Oh, Yuri. Got one more we need to gain. Poetry wise, looks like we got a few more. Um, we got this one, which we have as the thumbnail for last episode. And is that it? I think that's it. The picture thing went away. Hey, all the backgrounds are here. Anything? Nope, that's about it. And then we got the music things, which. Meh. All right. So, next episode, we will be finishing up self-love, and after that, we will continue if... Ooh, my brain's depicting a lot of things. But, however, depending on how long the next episode is, we'll determine whether or not we continue with DDLC the time after, off the bat, or if some extra stuff shows up like the end of this one, if we check those out. I don't know. I don't know what to expect anymore. One way or the other, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. I really probably should check up on those Discord messages. I've been waiting a while. Uh, if you want to check out any of the other digital novels that we have checked out prior to this, click the link at the bottom right corner and try to take you to that destination. Or, instead of any stops on this ride, click the link across right here and the train will take you there. In the meantime, this train's off to its next destination, but we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Bye!